Greetings my friends! Since I know how much you love medieval weapons, I thought to make you a Christmas present. And that Christmas present is nothing but a visit to the German Historical Museum in Berlin. Enjoy! A good first taste of what we're gonna see. <laughs> I'm so excited! An area with some mortars and some cannons in the distance from the Renaissance period. Pretty nice. This is so cool, check it out. If you look at it from different angles, different figures appear and disappear. It's uh, Germans in different periods in history. German peoples. This is a great statue of Charles the Great, Charlemagne, or Karl in German. Portraits of Charles the Great, Charlemagne, and Emperor Sigismund. Interesting chaps, hey? And now here is the flagship of the entire museum, in my opinion. A knight in full Gothic armor, full plate, for him and his horse. So spectacular. You can see his mace, flanged mace hanging from his side. The armor is offering almost complete protection, except for the openings at the joints. Even the, the back of the horse is quite well armored. The tail is coming out from there. There is enough air for ventilation, just for, you know, the, the horse poo. It's a quite spectacular piece of armor. And his sword. His one-handed sword. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Some Crusader stuff. And a nice sword. Mm. Two Byzantine sponge helms from Byzantium, if you can believe it. Not sure what they're doing here. They should be in Greece, I guess, but yeah. That's all right. I think they could preserve them better than we could. So, good thing they got them. Here we can see some ceremonial saddles from ivory. Pretty nice. And the tapestry in the back, made of wool and linen. Now, that's a legitimate use of wool and linen. And down here, crossbow bolts and the crossbow. That thing looks quite crude, but I'm pretty sure it was quite effective as well. And an amazing horn. Very well engraved. And also some religious stuff, like an angel with a spear. I'm just kidding. Here's chain mail and a broad spear. Actually, that's like a cutting spear. It's very heavy. You can easily cut with the side, it's sharpened. and a breastplate, and a gothic helmet, and a flanged mace, and some stabbing daggers, looks like a rondel, and another mace, and another gothic helmet. Remember, we're in Berlin, northern Germany, the birthplace of gothic armor. Another chain mail and yet another chain mail. I don't know if you can notice, but uh, the rings are pretty small. They're pretty thin and pretty small. So it's a lightweight armor that can still not be cut by a sword. More helmets and a fantastic halberd. Very simple design yet very effective. A barboot helmet, some warhammers next to it. 
chain gloves a helmet with chain mail quaff, swaff, how do you pr pronounce it in English, I'm not sure and some meat and type gauntlets and something like a bill hook swords another mailed swaff, quaff Quack, 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 quack. Donald Duck. And another helmet. So that, that's a different design. It's not a gothic design. As well as that. Well, that was actually a, a German design, but uh, it was from later. And another nice breastplate. And another one. And some leg armor. And we can see there. And another pole arm, spear and the knacks at the same time. And here they have a re recreation of chainmail for you to, to touch. You can grab it and see how heavy it was, and it's quite heavy. Despite the, the thin rings, it does become quite heavy. This thing is, well, I don't know, several kilos. It's quite heavy and seems to be quite uncomfortable to wear. So I guess it is true that uh, you need a belt in order to, you know, to hold some of the weight of the chainmail on your waist, not all on your shoulders, because then the shoulders become too heavy. Uh, swords, lots of swords, lots and lots and lots of swords of different lengths. Well, ve not very different lengths. They're all one-handed swords. Only the metal has remained. You see, some of the pommels are round. Some of them look like Viking pommels. All of them pretty nice. And here some Pavis shields, some big shields. Pretty big. It's uh, as tall as I am and I'm not a short person. This one too. And these are smaller shields. I believe they're also uh, used by archers though in the same fashion like Pavis shields, because of the strange shape they have. They're not very well made for deflecting, uh, you know, blows from swords and stuff. Melee weapons. Check out this book, how old it is. It depicts a city, which is Nuremberg. You know Nuremberg. Uh, it's pretty famous for the trials of Nuremberg. And this is how it was in the Middle Ages. And this book is so old, look at this. Real size church bell. And the mechanism. Going all the way up to the clock. Next to it, some more shields. And some more gothic helmets. And, of course, swords. These as you can see, are pretty big and they don't have a tip. Can you guess why? Because they're two-handed executioner's swords. Spooky, eh? And since we are in a historic museum, these are actual swords that actually took real heads. These swords have cut off heads. This is another very old book, The Chronicles of Cologne. All the work that was going into those books, these were made by hand. Can you even imagine, you know, painting this kind of book by hand? All those pages. 
So here is a city from the Middle Ages. There's this main road that brings you to the central palace and it's like a cross. Yep, now you see it better. It's like a cross. So the central palace can actually overlook everything. There is here is the cathedral. There is something that looks like a mausoleum or something. The walls all around the city. Let's watch it from a different angle. Emperor Maximilian, or Max for his friends. And here we see Max on horseback, wearing full plate armor, both him and the horse. And here is his scepter of power, and has this hidden dagger in the back. This is connected to the scepter, it's hollow, you can see, you can screw it in there. Sneaky, sneaky person. Here's another book with some knights and some German, medieval German that I cannot even read more than one, so I cannot tell you. And here are some light crossbows. Quite sweet. Who said battle axes? Basically pole arms. Very similar to halberds. And you will be surprised I found this here battle flail. So we can see that this was like a poor man's weapon. It's made of wood. The chain connecting it there is very short. It's basically an agricultural tool that uh, has gotten some spikes in order to make it a little more um, convincing as a weapon of war for some peasant. Yep. This kind of reinforces the point that flails were not so good weapons and they were just farming tools uh, adapted for war by, you know, peasants. Now some of you may be a little religious, so here is some religious stuff, some tapestries. Some priest cloaks. Church. Music books. Other church items. Here is Holy Mary with her son. And here is another book, which is the Legenda Aurea of Jacobus de Voragin. No idea who that is, or no idea what a Legenda Aurea is. So, big cross, with Christ on it, more medieval books. What I like the most about the books is, you know, the idea of books being made of such, you know, thick and natural materials like wood and metal, iron, and then hand-scripted, hand-written. It's amazing, hand-painted as well. It's quite amazing. And this is carved and painted. Jesus Christ being crucified. And here are some farming tools turned weapons. Sides, bill hooks, you name it, pitchforks, threshing tools. And guess what? A flail. Two handed flail. Now this could do some serious damage, but then again it's such a crude weapon. It's like a peasant's uh, one and only chance with one strike to do something before he dies. Because his opponent will be also armed. And here are those gentlemen having a nice conversation. They're holding a sword, a long sword. Pretty nice long sword. A one and a half sword, I guess you could say handle is not that big. Full plate. 
and this guy. And what is very impressive about that is that these guys are pretty short. Especially the short guy must be like 160 or less. No, actually 150. More, more like 150. And uh, the last time I was here in this museum, I was eavesdropping. Uh, there was a tour guide and he was uh, telling some people that it was because of uh, malnutrition because they were eating meat all the time and not so much uh, so many cereals not so much you know they were get weren't getting enough carbohydrates so they were staying quite short sometimes when it was like that with some nights oh well middle ages emperor karl v in a magnificent armor magnificent full plate is he holding? Is he holding like some kind of club? I don't see any, you know, head on this weapon. Strange. And his helmet is right next to it, to him, with the plumes, red plumes, really beautiful. And uh, here is a painting called uh, Emperor Charles Passing Judgment on His Enemies. That's Emperor Charles V. <laughs> this item is called the Hand of Justice. I don't want to even imagine what they were doing with it. <laughs> Look at that finger. How sinister is that? And these manacles here. Well, they're just manacles. It's for locking somebody somewhere. The left item seems to be inserted somewhere, that, like in a wall or something, and then... Yeah, the manacle obviously goes to a leg or arm, probably leg, because it's pretty big. And this is a Turkish cavalry bodyguard of uh, important figures. Because this kind of armor wasn't that common in that area. It was only reserved for, uh, you know, very important soldiers. Here are some more helmets. Beautiful metal shield made of steel. Really nice. And that spike in the middle. Ouch. And a one handed sword with those rings for protection of the hand. An interesting dagger. Interesting shape. And not very symmetric, too, I may add. So either it was made like that because of bad craftsmanship or the bigger side was the cutting side and needed to have a little more weight. And this is a hand cannon, first type of firearms. And a conquistador style helmet. And yet another helmet. These are four amazing and huge paintings from Augsburg in the four seasons, in the festivals they had. Apparently they had a lot of festivals in Augsburg. What we're looking here is the spring. And then here is the summer. This thing is huge, by the way. I don't know if you can see it in the video. Summer. Autumn. No, sorry, that is winter. That is winter, November, December, October. And autumn is here. Apparently there's some jousting going on in autumn in Augsburg. And now we're entering the Renaissance and you're going to see some really weird items. Well, these are some pistols. Nothing very weird about them. That is a helmet, likewise. But that is a huge, enormous sword. Enormous. I don't know, I'm not sure if you can see how big this, this thing is. 
It's a, like a, th a three-handed sword, not a two-handed sword. Ah, there is a label here. I'll go under it. There you go. It's made of bone. It's made of wood and bone. Sawfish blade. <laughs> yeah, it's quite interesting. And there, you can see some other strange items. Well, this is a hand cannon. Not that strange, I guess. But this here is a battle axe together with a pistol. See that? That's a pistol. <laughs> Quite interesting, eh? And these are some other handguns. Kind of like short rifles with uh, a lot of carvings of ivory. And that is a very nice sword, one-handed sword. Pretty nice. And that is a spooky anatomy book so that you know how to kill somebody. It's pretty important with all those weapons. To also know how to use them, I guess. More jousting stuff. These are the guards from the lances for the jousting. Some nice stirrups. Look at the, the amount of detail they were putting in just stirrups. It's crazy. And these are some things that I'm not sure what they are, to be honest. Where they go, maybe just some kind of masks for the horse or something else. Hmm. Horse muzzles, muzzies, muzzies, whatever. Um, yeah, can't really imagine the horse being in there comfortable. Or, I mean, they're not that protective, I guess. But this is, this is quite <laughs> amazing. It's a great plate armor for the, for the head of the horse. And here we see some more armors. Check these guys out. So imposing. This breastplate has a point. If you can see, this is a point. So that it deflects blows. They don't they cannot strike vertically at that area. Nice shoulder shoulder plates, really thick. This, this steel is very thick, it's, it looks very, very strong, like impenetrable. Several millimeters. Here's a mitten type gauntlet. Here are some other breastplates, neck guard, helmet, and another one. Great detail. <laughs> He's holding also the guard from the lance. More shoulder plates, another helmet with open face. Horse helmet. And another short knight full plate. And Another knight. Not with gothic plate though this time. But totally armored him and his horse. And we go back again. Don't worry, that horse is not gonna poop. Not pooping this horse anymore. Pretty nice. And here is some jousting. Jousting, jousting. I don't know why... The... It's interesting, eh? This guy is just sitting there. Ah, I see. Some kind of emperor is jousting. And then this guy is sitting there so that with a shorter lance so that he cannot hit the emperor. He's just a, a dummy, basically. Just for the emperor to hit in safety. That's why the emperor is not armored. <laughs> it's an interesting hobby. I'm sure many people would love this job. Another nice mortar. <laughs> Look at that. You put the powder back there. Press it in and then put the, the iron ball and fire away. 
and woe to those who are in the missile's path. Here we see a siege of Valencia. I'm not sure if it means Valencia in Spain, but it says Valencia. Uh, there is some light, I'm not sure if you see it very well. I'll get some distance. Troops talking, drinking, not besieging too much. Looks like a festival, to be honest. More than a siege. Here, we're starting to have guns and funny looking helmets with open face. The armors are painted black. I guess it makes you look more mean. There you go. That guy is a cavalry man with a sword and pistols, double pistols. And there is more of that. More swords with pistols. The famous pistoliers. Hmm. And they have rapiers. Those are not sabers. The blade is very thin and light. Interesting. Small swords. Small swords. <laughs> Look at these guns. These are enormous. These are enormous. That looks like nobody can lift it. Actually. And that. And here we see the rapier of uh, the Elector Georg Wilhelm. Look at that guard. Quite interesting. Confusing as well. Blade, straight and thin and double edged. And then some daggers. Strange. Spooky daggers. This is for capturing a sword there, I guess. And this is this kind of dagger that looks like fiction. Like fan fiction. But it's real. And uh, it's something you stab somebody with and then it opens inside the body. A pistol. This way you give it the powder. King Louis of France. What a charmer. Absolute pretty boy. Here's a short sword and a pistol. You can see that it's a single-edged short sword with one side of the blade thicker than the other for chopping power. And here is the relief of Vienna. Apparently that's how Vienna got uh, reliefs, not by going to the toilet. And next to it, the taking of Buddha. Is that Budapest? The pest part is missing, which is a good thing, I guess. This is the Turks there. Here's some weapons with too many stones for my taste. They look like they have some kind of tropical disease. This is a battle standard. It is uh, the standard of the mounted regiment of Henix von Treffenfeld. And here's a breastplate again, a helmet with open face, and that kind of gun. <laughs> Here we start to see we start to see some grenadiers. Yeah. This is a grenadier of Friedrich Wilhelm the First. That powerful Prussian king. The light is in the way. And here's another one. And here is Friedrich Wilhelm himself. 
chubby fellow, but apparently a very good uh, soldier and tactician. Spooky looking Eastern axe. Hunting spears from the Renaissance. Really heavy. The shaft is very, very thick to give them weight, I guess. And uh, the blade also is pretty thick. And some more guns. And some kind of long knife there. Pistols, sword, more guns, and yet more guns. And this is where you can start having shivers. These are the actual clothes that Friedrich the Große, Frederick the Great, was wearing. That is his walking cane, and this is his outfit. And here are his gloves. Rifles, swords, riding boots. And here we see infantry rifles with bayonets. You see the bayonet is on the side. It's uh, on the right side and it is fastened with a screw. That's quite interesting, eh? Those are the rifles that made the Prussian army close to invincible at the time. Well, of course, it wasn't the rifles, it was the men mostly. And these are swords. It is spontoons of the National Guard and volunteer battalions and uh, three cavalry broadswords. They are single-edged, as you can see, and uh, quite heavy. Those are not flimsy rapiers. Those are proper hacking swords. And those are some interesting anti-cavalry spears, as you can see. They have some hooking uh, devices that uh, go into two directions, in fact, so that no matter how you hold it, you can still grab and pull the rider off his horse. At the same time, they're pretty long. I would say they are about uh, two and a half meters or more. Yep. And they've got this kind of pointy back, so you can stick them in the ground if you want to use them as flagpoles or whatever. And uh, you can even see here some marks on the wood, which look like cuts like dents, and higher up you can see some more, like right there, if you can see it. Quite interesting to think that those things have seen action, eh? Some more rifles with bayonets and pistols. Now here are some interesting swords. The short one is actually an infantry saber. It's a very short saber. It's about, uh, I don't know, uh, half a meter. It's a, it's a special type of saber known as Stralsund saber. And uh, the other one, the big one, is an officer's saber of Major Ferdinand von Schill. Now that's a proper saber. A really beautiful one. You can see how they removed metal from the middle of the sword to give it more light, uh, a more light weight. 
but at the same time the cutting the cutting edge is uh, quite proper some more Prussian sabers we are in Berlin after all they're all so amazing and here we see Prince Karl August August von Hardenberg was born at uh, 1750, died 1822, and he's in Paris here. He thought, yeah, let's take a picture. Wait a minute, there are no cameras to make pictures with. Let's have a portrait. It's pretty nice, though. And his uh, trousers are too tight. <laughs> Must have been fashion back then, too. So here we see, after the Battle of Leipzig, the three leaders um, they are having a civilized conversation after shedding a little bit of blood. <laughs> yeah, you know what they say, that uh, war is the continuation of diplomacy with other means. In this case, diplomacy is the continuation of war <laughs> with other means. This is from uh, 1917. It's a US trooper, First World War. The bayonet uh, is covered with that sheath, his rifle, gas mask, the whole deal, gloves, hat, shovel, other small items. This uh, helmet, particular helmet that they had back then, had a trench knife. Check this out. It's like a knuckle duster. Just for stabbing, I think, although it's in the sheath, so you can't really tell, but it seems to uh, be very thin to have a blade. It's just a stabbing iron, that's my guess. And this kind of hat which resembles uh, uh, the, the, the rangers of uh, Canada <laughs> a bit. Uh, and here you can enjoy some US propaganda, join the Navy, the service for fighting men. Translation, you're a pussy if you don't join the Navy. I want you for US Army. Well, if that guy wants you, Uncle Sam, then how can you say no? He gave you chocolates. Sure, we'll finish the job. I'm not sure what job he's going to finish with his hand in, in there, in his pocket. But okay, victory, liberty, loan. Translation, a way for the bankers to make money based on war and bloodshed of others. The call to duty. Join the army. It's your duty to join the army for home and country. It's your duty to go to a continent one planet away <clears throat> to fight somebody you don't know for home and country. Makes total sense. Victory, liberty, loan. For home and country, look at your family. I'm sure it helps them somehow if you uh, go to war and uh, also buy victory, liberty, loans and make some bankers rich. And buy a liberty, a liberty bond lest I perish. So if you don't buy it, it's not the bankers that will lose money, it's liberty itself that will perish. I hope now you understand uh, all the totally logical reasoning for sending Americans to a war half a planet away. And now the German part of the propaganda. Subscribe to war bonds for a good peace. Does your money help you join the fight? Subscribe to the war. Subscribe to the war loan. Another commercial bank, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. I guess it was uh, the similar thing in all countries. Oh, here, that's interesting. That's, what is it? Here is an Italian propaganda poster uh, portraying Italy like this lady with the sword, not letting the barbarian invader from Germany 
with a spiked club chained to his wrist and a torch to burn everything. Not letting that guy, uh, who has this puzzled look in his face like, what the hell? A chick with a sword threatening me. <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, it's first, first World War propaganda for, uh, yeah, opposing the Germans. Bit back the Hun with liberty bonds. Again. Fucking hell. Oh dear. And uh, the German gentleman here from the Prussian army with this spike here on the helmet is portrayed as some kind of dark looking monster. I think a big part of uh, you know, the propaganda between uh, nations was monsterizing the enemy. That's quite terrible, like, kind of makes us forget that they're humans on both sides. Here is, so here is an interesting exhibit. It's the manufacture of the steel helm, the Stahlhelm of uh, the German army in the First World War and then in the second also they kept it. Starting like that, being pressed into this, then being pressed another time into this, in different molds, being pressed into this, and then into this, and then into this, and then into this, and to this you see some of the material is removed, and then up there, and then those parts are cut and then turned to the inside and form the finished product, which was this. It was probably the best helmet of the time. This is a sword of a... This is a sword of a member of the Viennese Academic Legion. Sorry for banging my camera against the glass. I can't help it sometimes. And then there are some sabers from the Viennese National Guard down here. Fancy that hand guard? Pretty long sabers. Not too heavy. They're pretty um, thin. The metal is not too much. But yeah, they're quite long. <laughs> and the murderous pointy edge. A murderous uh, pointy end. Over there. Wow, this is a powerful painting. It's Prussians storming and taking the Alsen Island by storm against the Danish. So we see the Prussian soldiers. That was uh, an attack that happened uh, the, at uh, 1864. 1864. We see the Prussian soldiers here charging, using the rifles as a club, firing pistols, charging with bayonets, and taking the island of Alsen by force. Here we see the boats of the Prussians coming. Quite spectacular. It's pretty dark, this painting, but it uh, has more light here. It has more light around the Danish flag. And here are some guns, some infantry guns. The one on the left with the shorter barrel is a hunting rifle, 1854. The others are infantry rifles. Bolt action. A Prussian helmet from 1867 with the eagle and uh, a uniform and a sword. Straight sword. Straight saber. This gentleman is King Wilhelm I. And here are more Prussian helmets. The top ones have plumes as well. This spike was such a good idea, I think it was very imposing. Although it gave your position away a bit more, I think, when you were in cover. Because you could see your spike, but at the same time... It uh, was quite imposing as a, as, an, as a look. What we see here is a prosthetic leg made of wood. Uh, painted wood and some leather parts 
for somebody who lost his leg in the war. Here we see different types of helmets shot, which probably means that uh, the person who was wearing them ended up dead. Uh, this is a British helmet. And uh, I'm not sure what this is. It's a strange kind of helmet. But the one next to it is quite definitely German. And a Prussian helmet with a bullet hole and another Prussian helmet covered with fabric. Which also is shot by a bullet, but it's not penetrated. It's quite interesting. <laughs> of course there are two different types of bullets, so maybe it was shot by, I don't know, a pistol or something. Now, here is some First World War stuff, and look at that, it's a breastplate. Apparently there were some soldiers that were using breastplates to protect themselves in the First World War. It's actually quite effective if the, the steel is quite thick, and this steel is thick. Look, I don't know if you can see it. Of course, uh, of course the rifle bullets at the time were uh, huge and uh, could penetrate steel, but this steel is quite thick and I believe it could probably resist a, a bullet uh, shot. And then there are some machine guns there, different types, rifles, bayonets, <laughs> check this out, a little flail for trench warfare, which probably ended up here because the guy who had it died, because he realized it's totally ineffective. It's got a spring though, maybe with a spring it's a little more effective, but I mean, come on, just get a knife, man. Yeah. Now that's more proper. Some nice knives. And this is a rifle. It's a pretty huge rifle, I have to say. It looks very heavy. And it's got this steel plate for protection in front of it, so you can set it up and fire without being in danger of being shot at yourself. It's a pretty good idea. And here we see Germania. The impersonation of Germany. She looks very pissed off. Check out this face. She looks like she's ready to kill somebody. So it's the impersonation of Germany, with long blonde, kind of reddish blonde hair, the Prussian eagle, armored, holding the sword, ready for battle. It's quite spectacular. This is an artillery shell. It's huge. It's about two meters tall. Very, very big. And all that was filled with incendiary material. So you can imagine the havoc it would wreak when it fell somewhere. Here are some different infantry regiments. On the left is a French infantry soldier. And then the others are German soldiers, I believe. The one on the right is definitely German. I'm not sure what this is, though. It could be like, um, I don't know, asking for money, opening the lid and asking for money when he was out. Airplane bombs, First World War. Mortar shells. Rifle grenades. And hand grenades. Potato masher style. And those round pineapple grenades. Different types of bombs, different types of mortar shells. <laughs> and a helmet. All right. Here's another machine gun, First World War, and here this is Second World War uh, equipment. We can see that they have already adopted camouflage. The leather military boots and the helmet in camouflage as well. A rifle over there. Let's go on the other side. A 
steel hand granate, steel hand grenade, and then there is an MG34. This is an MG34 with a, uh, a stand, very potent machine gun, light machine gun. And then the, the rifle is. Uh, The rifle is a 98K with a scope. It's got a scope. Now this is a German flag gun, 8.8 centimeters. This thing is huge. This thing is enormous. It's got a seat here for the operator, some instruments. That's for turning it. Here is the base where it stands. This thing is huge. That's where you load it from. And here's for the second operator, the other seat and more instruments and more turning wheels, steering wheels, whatever and here are some Soviet weapons from the Second World War like mortar shells and rocket launcher uh, well, rockets <laughs> and tank weapons here we see a Panzerfaust this long thing and some anti-armor weapon like a bazooka I think it's the German version yeah it's the German version I think it's an early version though have you heard of the V2 rocket? Uh, it was an enormous rocket and this is its combustion chamber combustion chamber it's basically so big, it's like several times bigger than a person, and that's just the chamber, so you can imagine the rocket. It was enormous and, uh, you know, the idea with it is you, you just drop one, you send one missile somewhere and you don't have to worry about anything there anymore. There's nothing left. And this is an East Germany uniform. You see, it combines kind of the Russian, the Russian type helmet, with uh, you know a, a jacket, a coat that uh, resembles a bit the the previous the World War II German uniform, and an AK-47, of course. So I came back here with my mate to make the outro for this video. This is our visit to the German Historical Museum in Berlin. Uh, we focused mostly on the military, medieval stuff and uh, up to the First World War but uh, there is so much more to see here, non-military things so anytime you get the chance you should visit this museum it's the most amazing museum for uh, this kind of weapons and armors uh, that I've ever seen in my life with the Glasgow Museum in Scotland coming second so I hope you enjoyed that little uh, museum visit gift from me so I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.